simulation guy, far from it, I'm going to start off by saying that, but if you ask me how I spent the 18th of November, me and the lads sat and played Firefighter Simulator The Squad, where in case you were wondering, the game is a simulation game where you and optionally some mates plays firefighters and do what firefighters do. Definitely for some this sounds extremely mundane and boring, but if you come with me I'll tell you why it isn't so much. This game was very obviously played on the Intel i7 7700K and GTX 1080 with 32GB of RAM because nothing has changed since the last upload. Well, a few things have changed, but not the computer anyway. We can do shit now. Apart from maybe the upload location. Now the game does want an i7-3820 or a FX-8350 and either a GTX 1070 or Radeon RX 5600 XT. It also wants 16GB of RAM which I do find odd. Anyway, let's talk about the performance of the game on the hardware that I have. Driving in this game, it runs perfectly. No frame dips, no frame drops. There were stutters though. It did stutter a lot. At first I did think it was just because we're playing multiplayer, but the next time I started playing it, everyone was saying about the stutters at the exact same time, so it's not anything to do with lag. There are just some stutters while driving. I was playing this game in the default high settings, and I was experiencing over 100 FPS, but I think we'll go back to that later. Right now we need to talk about the firefighting aspect of Firefighter Simulator The Squad. After all, it's literally in the name. Absolutely no change at all. I maybe only lost about 10 to 20 frames per second, but the fires are ferocious and they are vividly detailed with plumes of black smoke that obscure many details when you're running through a building. I feel maybe that's the key. The smoke obscures things so they don't actually need to be rendered in which can save any poor GPU from having a nuclear level meltdown. If so that is an excellent move in their part because the game does run great. Just those few little bugs there, nothing major. I did manage to get stuck on a ladder and that caused me to restart the game. And my brother has fell through the map. More on that later. Now graphically this game isn't pushing the boat when it comes to the power of Unreal Engine. Firefighter Simulator does look good but it doesn't hold a candle to see Darksiders 3 in terms of its graphical fidelity or world detail, but it doesn't have to. The gameplay certainly makes up for this lack of fidelity as it is a simulation and it's not exactly an expansive open world RPG or a first person shooter. But when it comes to talking about the story we need to ask, what story? The game's more like Descenders or Phasmophobia, it's got a premise. You and up to three friends are all on call firefighters who are called to various jobs around town, and in a shocking twist of events, it's your job to put out the fires. Who knew? I was using it. See, see, see the act, mate, they fucking like take six or seven hits to put the door in. I had an act. You can actually I take was using open. it. Respond to an emergency call. Well, I mean, aren't all calls technically emergencies? How the fuck was there a traffic accident? You start as an either at the station or somewhere else in town and you get a little call from dispatch telling you there's a fire and you go and put it out. It's not rocket science. It should go without saying though that when it comes to the gameplay it is a simulation so the gameplay has been meticulously crafted to give you the most immersive experience possible. This starts from the get-go. Driving this two-ton behemoth of a fire engine or fire truck, depending on where you are in the world, can be like drifting an elephant. Now, you can lock other engines that are vastly better in utility and capability, and some trucks will even take the corners horizontally. When you're in a lobby, you can pick from any truck really, extremely long trucks to ones with extendable ladders. There are far more, but you can mainly break it down into the utility and what you need. Now obviously you are going to want to drive the new truck just once you've unlocked it, and you will soon find your favourite, as each truck comes with its own little drawbacks. Some you don't have to connect to a hydrant and some are absolutely impossible to turn whereas others are a hindrance to the fire. Having an extendable ladder is great if it can reach the fucking building. I don't know if we can... Do you want to maybe try and bring the ladder, lad, do you want to bring the ladder back in? We'll bring the extenders back in see if we can turn that in. I just need to drive it forward really, but if you want. Now when you're playing in co-op, you are going to end up running a little routine. If I'm with my friends, I have a routine as well, so let me explain our routine for example. After arriving at the scene, myself, my brother and my friend will all do our own little things. My brother grabs an axe and sees what doors need to be caved in. My friend grabs a supply line and hooks it up to the mains of the truck, and I'll set up three attack hoses ready for action. With all the doors down in pieces, it's time to rescue the civilians, if there are any. There are some missions where you do just have to use a fire extinguisher, which is a lot easier. The AI don't know how to use fire extinguishers. Though. So after grabbing anybody that's been in the burning building, you take them to the paramedic and commence the firefighting. You do get different types of fire that can be ascertained from the noise they make when they hit them. If there's no noise then everything's fine. If there's a loud hiss however, this usually donates that it's an oil fire and at this point someone needs to run back to the truck to get the CO2 extinguisher. If however you don't hear a loud hiss, your character sure might have and he's just going to shout that there's an oil fire anyway. Once you arrive at the scene you do need to work from the bottom to the top as quickly as possible. There is a sort of time based experience system in place where you get the 
extra experience for getting there faster and putting out the incident faster it's worth some experience if you do put it out with good time it'll let you know if you put it out in a sort of average time it'll let you know and if you completely miss these marks it's going to see it up the very top right the more experience you get the quicker you're going to level and the more trucks you're going to be able to drive as quickly as possible as well as that the more missions you'll be able to do easy now given that this is a simulation you do have to go through the motions if you will take off the cap carry the hose attach the hose attach the nozzle put down the supports before you use the big ladder smack the door 100 times to break it with an axe and all that other good stuff this mechanic is the fire though it can spread if you're not careful working from the base of the fire upwards does allow for an easy job but you do have to be careful when you enter certain rooms flashover is a mechanic that can turn the mission into something much harder the particular type of flashover found in this game is called the backdraft flashover this is where the room is hot and the materials are broken down so that they are internally on fire but there's no oxygen in the room so it all looks fine from the outset the very second you introduce oxygen to said area everything will catch fire in a huge fireball that includes yourself i legitimately had to do some research on this and that's me just dumbing it down to what I understand and I'm a pretty stupid person. Now unlike Superman you do take fire damage and I've never managed to die in this game so I'm unsure if it's going to let you respawn at the paramedic or if that's it for you. Just because it's a fun casual simulation game doesn't mean that you have to go and be stupid about certain things. There is a singular similarity to yourself that can be drawn with Superman as well and that is you have to get all the victims out of the house and into safety else you can't complete it. So you just got to put them on your shoulder and casually stow out of the building like you fucking own the place, put them in the paramedic gurney and then you go easy you just gotta find them in the burning building that can be hard overall i can easily play this game for about three hours at a time it is very repetitive but it is also very fun and i would say this experience would be greatly heightened if it was in vr if not be very chaotic i would happily play this game in vr however we are coming to an end here and as such we now need to drop a verdict on firefighter simulator the squad that's its whole name by the way just what a fucking name <laughs> So anyway, performance 8, story 4, gameplay 9 overall, 7 out of 10. Let me explain this score to you all really quickly. The premise and not the story is fairly solid. That being said though, there is more to being a firefighter than actually fighting fires. I was in a car crash, there was absolutely no fires and the firefighter still showed up. In my opinion, the name firefighter is a bit of a misnomer. The job entails a lot more than fighting fires and this game just doesn't include stuff like that. Like I said, the performance is quite solid, but there are those few little bugs that are very easy to replicate that still remain in the game. This game is not early access, so therefore I can't really let that slide. If I get indefinitely stuck on a ladder or fall through the map to see the top guards and the pedestrians still walking around, is that really something that should be easily replicated in a game that isn't in early access? The gameplay is quite solid though. Granted, there are a few things that I've found in my research and things in real life that aren't in this game, but when it comes to simulations, you've either got Microsoft a flight simulator or surgeon simulator. I'd smack this game right next to house flipper if I'm honest. You get a good idea of what's going on and what actually does get done in real life but in no way shape or form does it actually prepare you for what the job entails. Like I've got like 20 hours in house flipper but don't ask me how to change the tap in a sink because it just won't work. Anyway guys that's it, I've came at the end, thank you very much for watching, I'm not going to ask you to comment, like and subscribe, it's a free country, do whatever the fuck you want but I'll see you in a wee bit shaggers, enjoy.